Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Conlin in Washtenaw County, Michigan. He has a woman before him who has several bond violations, and he's about to let her out on a PR bond. And they tell her, you can only hurt yourself if you speak. You, you can't help yourself by speaking. Well, she couldn't help herself. And it pretty go pretty much goes downhill after that. Anyway, it's really funny at the end. So I'll let you guys watch. Good afternoon, Rob J. Kill on behalf of uh, Kayla Brookshire. Uh, Kayla, did you state your name for the record? Kayla Brookshire. Okay, good afternoon. Today's the date and time set for a hearing. I think it's a uh, I believe we have a pretrial coming up in August, but this is a violent bond two bond bond violent. Correct? Judge, what the, what this boils down to is a young lady who's on tether um, and she doesn't have a good relationship with her father. Long story short, I'm not putting any blame on him. She didn't have the chargers. So there's a series of of, of her tether not charging. Warnings are going off to charge it. And and basically that's what this boils down to. Um I, you understand the outfit she's wearing now. She has been addressed by community mental health. They have prescribed medication. She is on that medication. I would ask the court if it would please one last time put her back out on PR bond and we just adjourn this matter until the August pretrial. I don't think you'll have any other problems. But again, no, it's it's it, per the report, she did go into an inclusion zone, but she got out of it immediately. She was working for DoorDash at that time. But the main complaint is that her, her her tether is always discharging and she's not charging it properly. I had a long conversation with her last night at the jail. I don't think you'll have any other issues. I would like to get her back out on a PR bond and give her one last chance until our pretrial. Okay, so I think as far as though there was a, there was the original Washington bond hearing on July eighth, and then two days later. So just so you're aware, um, Ms. Brookshire, you know it's it's uh, there's there's a couple of different instances that it's claimed that you violated your bond. Mr. Killowall just summarized that that they were failure to charge the the device, and that you went to outside the I say either inside the exclusion zone or outside the inclusion zone, one of those two. But just so you know, that's why you're incarcerated, correct? Yeah, they never Kayla, told me when they arrested me, I guess. I never knew I went, I was blocks and blocks away from my zone. So I didn't know I ever entered it at that time. But that's why you're in custody now. And so Mr. Killawald is asking me to adjourn the, the substance and not make any sentence or or violation or finding he's just asking to hold off but he's asking to have you released correct you understand that yes all right so my question mr kilowatt is how does it get better if i release her today like well, what's well, what's what's like you talked about her father and that bad relationship and, and again she I, go? And, and again she has she has uh friends she can live with she has a charger the, the friend there was even several people that volunteered volunteer to let them use her charger. All I'm saying is, Judge, we had a long, frank talk last night. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice. She understands that if there's another violation, she's staying in jail, Judge. And and again, I, I'm not minimizing, condoning anything, but but again, the, the offenses are that she's just not charging properly. She thought there was a malfunction, which by this was not the case. But again, Judge, I'm just asking you to release her back on PR bond she is with community mental health. She will promise to be with community mental health. She has a place to stay and you won't have any further charging incident. Okay, um, Mr. Emmons or Agent McElroy White, any thoughts there? I mean, it's a trial, so it's not a probation question. You know, I guess Mr. Emmons. I think, Sorry. I think what I'm seeing is that there's a lot, of, a lot of instability happening in a very short period of time. I've got one, two, three, uh, four or five different different violations within the past two months, and that, that I mean, she was arrested at least twice in, in that period of time as well. Um, and, and it's not like 
they're making it absolutely clear that she was charged. And I'm looking at this 6, 10, 24. They're saying that she had charged for only 40, I think it was 45 minutes in the last five days, and that's back in June. Yeah, we're going into the exclusion zone. She's telling the officer she thought it was defective. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's it's either willful ignorance about how the process works, or it's just an outright, you know, neglecting to do what needs to be done. Um, or, or a combination, or a mental health issue. Sure, sure. I mean, or I mean, I guess that was the question about the father: is that you sort of led with that, and I'm not clear how that relates. I'm sorry. Types of things. You said that she's got a bad relationship with her father. And I'm not well, well, clear, so I just want to know, like, what's going to get better if I let well, her out? This the judge with the father was she had her. She was living there for a while. Things didn't work out, but but the fact is, her two charging units are there. <clears throat> Excuse me. She tried to get the units back. She doesn't, but she has another unit she can charge. What's going to get better is that that I guess you telling her if there's one more violation, she's she's going to uh, stay in jail. And again, she's finally working with community mental health. I actually saw her yesterday when they were prescribing the medication for her. I think she'll be stabilized. And I would just give ask you give this young lady one last chance. So I guess I guess I would like to know where she where she's going to be going to be to be released. And I would ask the court if the court isn't trying to release her instead of putting her on an exclusion zone. Put her on home confinement. Well, Judge, I mean, she she wants to work, and and so I understand the prosecutor's argument, but but again, though, and again, I'm not minimizing this. The only reason she's in jail is because their their tether went got to a critical low function. And again, I'm not minimizing that, but it's not like how she's out there committing crimes, Judge. And so I'm asking. Uh, one last time, she told me there are several people that she can reside with. She can tell to other people that. And I would just okay. ask. I mean, you're sort of skirting his suggestion rather than an exclusion zone or anything like that. What if I tethered her to a location? I mean, home confinement, you, you sort of threw aside. She kind of wants to work. Like, what are your I mean, Mr. Killowall, you know, like if we're going to do this, I got to know more. I mean, I agree. Her violations are failure to charge a tether. I bet you if she owns a cell, uh, an iPhone, it's charged all the time. I don't forget how to charge my iPhone. So I'm just saying to you, it's not that significantly different. I appreciate everything you're saying. And I'm only saying this kind of for her benefit, not lecturing you. But the fact of the matter is we're here because of this chaos. And I understand that there may be a lot of factors playing into that, but Mr. Evans is advocating for me to be a little more cautious. Not, I mean, I could remand her to the pretrial. I don't really intend to do that, but I think that we got to have a little more than that. So when you say she wants to work, does she have a job? Does well, she have a plan? Is there anything that I could do? The, the most of her income was DoorDash and she was making significant monies. Her car is not functioning whatever. I don't know the specifics of that. Although, although she could be employed elsewhere. I mean, she does want to work to support herself. She doesn't. And so I can't really tell you, does she have a job today? No. If she had a car vehicle, she'd be door dashed. And she says she makes pretty good money doing that. So that being said, judge, all I'm asking for is, is if you, I, I can get specific addresses if, if you need them, I just don't have them right now. I have several names, but I don't have the addresses. And so you're under, you have her on an FA, but there's also an underlying district court stalking case. And that's where these violations are coming from. She keeps going into that exclusion zone. Where, that's the thing. I can't, there's, there's a stalking victim. I think I she keeps going into this 605 Williams. It's it's my understanding the district court case is on the $500, 10%, $500, which is $50. I'm asking the court again to, if we have to have hearing down the road, so be it. But I mean, I'm telling her that if there's one more charge, well, actually, I'm not telling her because you're the judge. But if this happens again, she's probably going to be in jail till the pretrial date. Yeah, please. Um, I, I'm asking for a PR bond, knowing that she has to post $50 in the district court. So I hope I'm not jeopardizing a way. I'll leave it at that, Judge. If you want to make, if 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 the bond could be minimal in this case, just in case, 
She doesn't post well, the other. You know me, and my bonds are minimal. Like I, I'm look. I am. How about a hundred dollars ten percent in bond, and it's either all or nothing. Hundred dollars ten percent on this case. No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna give her a PR bond in this case, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change the bond condition regarding the tether though. So or I'm gonna I'm gonna. No, nope. sure. I mean, I don't know that that's a good idea, but you are welcome to do that. Kayla, the judge has already told you he's going to give you a PR bond. All you can do is make it. Go, we go downhill from here. I don't want to go downhill. I just want to say what what the situation kind of was when he no, mentioned my we, dad. You told me that, and it took about thirty minutes last night. So let's just keep it. <laughs> well, because it depends on these stipulations if I'm going to fail or not. Because my dad, I lived up there. Here we go. And then he hurt me. That's why I'm moving out. So I don't can't say, hey, I'm stuck to a place. I have a few places I can go that I'm set for a week. So I'm going to work for that week and then get my own place. But I have places I can go and stay. But I don't know how that person's going to feel if you say, hey, I have to stay there like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I do. But I also kind of I mean, I mean, I kind of this is a moment a little bit where the rubber meets the road. So when you tell me that it's not safe for you to stay with your father and you have a couple of other places that tells me you might be safer to stay in jail until we clarify this. No, no, so I'm not safer to stay in jail. Yourself. Except that I guess here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order your release from the Washtenaw County jail on personal recognizance. I am going to order a tether in place before you are released and I'm going to order that to be home confinement to a particular address that you or your lawyer submits to community corrections prior to your release. So I don't know that address and you don't need to commit to it right now. But you got some time to reach out to these friends and ask to whom you can stay. And then you can be uh, basically confined to that residence. So here's the deal, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brookshire, when you're released... If you have a job offer and can put into words like I've got a job waiting for me at X or I need to be at a different location, your lawyer can always come in here and ask me to change that. I don't have any real, I'm not wedded or married to you staying at one particular location, but it's got to be not where your exclusion zone is and it's got to be with a plant. That's all I'm looking for because I'm. this is where I'm not comfortable is just letting you out and hoping you get a job or hoping you return to DoorDash, that hasn't worked. And so I'm saying if you come up well, with a plan, so. I'm willing to listen to it. Judge, just for the rest, she is, she already has a tether on. At the, she, they never took it off. At, you, you still have your tether on? No, they took it off today, it's dead. I'm sorry? They took it off today, it was dead, but here's the problem. I don't have numbers to talk to those any people till I get out to ask if I can stay there. I can go to my mother's, but it's a long ways away. I, I've only been out for two days at a time. I'm setting up for failure. My dad stole my chargers from my house. That's why I couldn't charge it. If you let me finish, if I could just like be my own lawyer. Thanks, I appreciate that. Go ahead. So what happened is, on July 3rd, my dad beat me up. I called the cops. They got turned around because I defended myself. Anyway, I got out. What happened is on the 5th, I told downtown cops I was going there because they were worried about me. And I got a civil assist by Carney. So he helped me and I took it to a location at the park because I was supposed to be there earlier. I have friends that live there. I was donating some of the stuff. Okay, look, okay, so let me, really, let me just I have this you. Up you situated. On, you can't go on for 30 minutes. Okay. I'm not going on for just 30 stop. minutes. Just, I'm just telling you what, because you're not letting me, you're not telling them what I told you. That's why I want that guy that I talked to earlier in the glasses to stick up for me. You're not listening to me, Bob. So, Ms. Brookshire, though, all you did there was make me more concerned for your safety and this. So, I'm going to adjourn this one week no, and I'm going to remand you to the jail. Please, okay, you sir, can come I'm up sorry, please. Plan with Mr. Mr. Sir, Killawald and you can come up with a plan. And sir, this sir, please. Yeah. I can't do nothing from inside to the jail. Please. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to explain to you why I didn't have my well, charger. Funny enough, Ms. Br I'm sorry, Ms. Brookshire. Everyone else transacts their entire life from inside the jail. 
I'm not ma- yelling at you, but I like there are ways call. that you can do this. God, and if you can't, it tells me that it's too chaotic. We can't, I can't just let you out to be taken by a police officer to a park to donate furniture or whatever. I don't understand I said, what you're I'm saying. I'm sorry I said anything. Will you please go back to the, I'm so sorry, please. I, my, I need to get back to my daughter. I need to use the hospital, dude. I need to get back on my feet. I can't do that inside jail. Please don't leave me here another week. I will listen to what you have to say. I'll go to 1440 Paris Street. Ms. Brookshire, you're not hearing me, though. I'm not doing an issue. It's not like you open your mouth and I'm I'm angry at you. What you said to me makes me worry for your yeah, safety. Worry, but I need to get it together. Why? I took myself out of the situation. Right. I took myself so out. I'm going to give you a week to come up with a plan. Please, I've already been here. I have a plan right now. I just keep doing no way to get a hold of them. Listen, I know the people. Mike is at Delana's. If you call Willie, I can stay at his house. That's my plan. Until I can get a hold of Lori, my my aunt Lori, I can sit there. I just don't have her phone number. No way to get a hold of her from jail. I don't have a phone here. Kayla, the judge has made a decision. No, please, judge, please, judge. I'm going to cancel the trial on August 7th, and I'm going to set the free trial for next. Thank you. I don't even know what I'm going to do. My car is going to get torn if I don't pay for that. Please, judge. Judge, please reconsider. I don't. Okay. I'm not. Kayla, God, I will. I I'll see you like, tonight. Oh, okay. You were waiting. Welcome back. People versus Melanie Cloutier. You're all set. You're all set, Ms. Brickshire. That. That's not fair. Thanks a lot, Bob. <laughs> you didn't say that. You're supposed to. That's why I told the other guy. You're fired, Bob. Donald Trump. If you try not to laugh right now, I'm just gonna just get this out of my system. Excuse me. <laughs> all right. Well, all I can say is they warned her. They told her not to speak. All she could do is harm herself. And she did. I'm sure she'll be able to find a place to be tethered. But she's going to have to be respectful and treat the people there well. Whoever they are. Whether it's her aunt or her friend or whatever. And I have a feeling the reason her dad doesn't want her at his house any longer is because she probably screwed him over at some point. And he doesn't want that. So she's going to have to be nice to whoever she goes and lives with, to wherever she's tethered. And she's going to have to get her life in order. Anyway, thank you guys so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.